Welcome to NKBA Voices from the Industry. This session is Invigorate Your Business by Elevating Healthy Kitchen and Bath Design. One hour session qualifies for NKBA, NARI, and NAHB CEU. NKBA members log in to nkba.org to record your CU credits. NAHB and NARI members submit for CUs through your usual submission process. I'm Jillian Pritchard Cook. Health and wellness design is what I will be speaking on today. I am founder of Wellness Within Your Walls. And I'm Steve Kleber, founder of Kleber & Associates. We've been building better brands that build better homes since 1987. It's great to be here with you. I wish we were face-to-face -face soon, but in the meantime, let's shake off the cobwebs and invigorate. Boy, it's been a long way, hasn't it, Steve, what we've been through since the beginning of this pandemic. My home has expanded and contracted more times than I care to count, especially as it relates to children studying at home and all of us on top of each other trying to do our businesses. And thanks to Robert Dietz, remodeling, he reports, is on the rise. In fact, the third quarter remodeling index reading of 82 indicates a strong remodeler sentiment. As businesses strengthened, as homeowners focus on the importance of their home for work and life amidst the pandemic and its consequences. We have disrupted supply chains, which is better than not having enough business. Actually, prices are going up, and the next concern is for inflation. The slowdown in the housing starts due to the pandemic is now increasing again. The supply of homes for sale has dropped, and it is at a historic low. Well, that goes back to my point about expansion and contraction. And it's really important for us to think about whether we're remodeling or we're b buying a house from the, that's built from the ground up, that we really pay attention to right sizing. This floor plan that you see in front of you is a custom home of about 5,500 square feet. But let's break it down. The upper right quadrant well, it refers to a one-bedroom living environment with all of that you need as it relates to dining, kitchen, entertaining, a spa bathroom, and you add on about 900 square feet and you have an exterior space. So let's just say we're in contraction mode and the family is not visiting and no one's living in your multi-generational suite, which you see approximately 622 square feet on the left side of your screen. Both of these areas are zoned. Now let's take ourselves to the middle of the pandemic. Everyone is coming home. You've got a boomer possibly living in your boomerang suite, or you have a boomerang child that's coming back to you because they're having to do their studies at home. You may also have other members of the family that are returning because you're living in a location that's not as dense, therefore using your lower level, again, is expansion. All three of these spaces are zoned, and all three of these spaces have exterior to take advantage of. So as we move through the pandemic and we get to the other side, let's think about how we can use that as a business module. Remember the word here is right-sizing. Let's talk about learning objectives, what we hope to accomplish here today. We want to learn about a holistic approach for achieving health and wellness in the kitchen and bath and also for your brand. We want to be able to identify key elements with each step so that you can learn to build your business. We want to understand and review and access products that are designed to promote healthy kitchens and baths as well as healthy brands and determine which products best fit your business model and will offer the most value to your clients. We want to discover ways to expand your client base and increase your revenue by integrating wellness principles into your business along with proven methods to market and promote your health and wellness differentiation. So let's talk about multifunctional spaces to start. 
We've all been tripping over each other, and as I said, right-sizing is everything. Right-sizing of your kitchen, your bathroom, right-sizing of your laundry room, right-sizing of all of your spaces. And multifunction is the main reason that we want to make sure each space accommodates more than one activity. We want to basically think about deconstructing our homes as it relates to how they're set up, thinking about what we've come through with the pandemic as we move back into a new world of branding through health and wellness, taking all that we've learned, thinking about how we can have healthier outcomes, making sure we have enough storage that we're not tripping over each other. It's really important as a designer to have the goal to get your clients settled. That was the same goal before the pandemic, became more evident during the pandemic, and this approach, specifically the holistic approach, is going to certainly help us bow well with healthy outcomes in the future. This approach will invigorate your bottom line. So let's get into health and wellness. Why is health and wellness so important? Well, interestingly enough, we were able to do a gap analysis in 2020 in the midst of the pandemic. A number of consumers were surveyed, and 77% felt it was very important to align with wellness products when given a choice. 73% felt that it was extremely important to the brand strategy. And the good news for you is that 59% were willing to spend more on healthy brands. The wellness industry is growing at $4.5 trillion, which is two times the rate of the global economy. That alone is a good enough reason to take health and wellness and incorporate it into your brand strategy. More consumers are looking to buy new homes and or remodel homes than living in their existing homes. So this is going to help you grow your business. Many, many more have invested in health and wellness industry. Consumers not only want versatile homes, but they want healthy homes. Savvy builders, remodelers, and manufacturers are all leveraging this opportunity and the increased demand they're going to leverage to grow their businesses. Wellness is not a trend. It's here to stay. Long after this pandemic is over, you need to now make a commitment to integrate wellness design into your brand. So how can you integrate wellness into your brand, you may ask? First, create a plan. If you don't have a direction, then any place is going to get you there. Create a plan to market and promote your focus on wellness in the home. Once you've put your plan into action, you must measure your results. As they say, if it didn't measure, then it didn't happen. Most important is to align with other brands, co-branding, to complement your practice and defend your design philosophy. It's important to have an elevator speech. Some claim that it should be done in eight words or less. Both sales and marketing need to fully understand the customer journey, or if you will, what we call sales and marketing alignment. Again, most people uh, measure their success by sales but marketing also can be measured. Marketing teams should be able to participate with salespeople. Salespeople often say, marketing doesn't bring me enough leads. Marketing says, you don't follow up on the leads that I give you. And so it's an age-old question whether you're a company of one or two people or a large global multi-brand opportunity. Sales and marketing must be aligned. You want to be on the same page when it comes to developing your client targeting and overcoming objectives. I grew up in the restaurant business before I started in marketing, and the waiters were the only ones that got the tips. Savvy restaurateurs, though, soon learned that if they would pool their tips, they would be able to pay the busboys to clean the tables quicker and to bring ice to the bartenders. Similarly, in sales and marketing alignment, Marketing people should share 
in the incentives that the salespeople typically enjoy. Provide incentives for both to establish joint goals and mutual rewards. My, my, that's a lot. <laughs> well, let's see. Could we possibly unplug and consider rejuvenating at this point, Steve? Absolutely. It's time to unplug your old brand, to rejuvenate, refresh, and reflect on a renewed focus. Co-branding opportunities is the ability to leverage your brand with others. To actively promote alignment with wellness-focused products to your clients and prospects. So how do you effectively promote your wellness design practice? Obviously focus on keywords. There's a big company called Google and they got that way for being able to categorize the entire internet. So when you produce content, you want to be able to use and promote some of these keywords. And of course, make sure your photography is excellent. Well, thanks for leading us into one of my favorite conversations, how to create a healthy kitchen. It's really important that we go beyond the word appliance and think about appliance science. Today's kitchens are equipped with convection, induction. They're even sophisticated enough to host sous vide and vacuum seal preserving. Our surfaces are extremely important in kitchens and they can be a very good profit center for you. Natural and repurposed wood and butcher block, quartz, stainless steel, and natural stone, all of these can set your kitchens apart. When we talk about water, we've come a long way, especially with the pandemic, as it relates to making sure we can use touchless faucets, point of use filtration for specific known contaminants, one of my favorite websites is the EWG, which stands for the Environmental Working Group. They've put together a campaign where you can put in your zip code, and it will tell you what contaminants are in your water, and you can do the research to figure out what the best filtration is for the water in your municipality. Also, water bottle fillers, that certainly cuts down on single-use plastics, which is extremely important moving forward in this sustainable and healthy climate. We've broken down a kitchen into three categories, and I'm going to start with luxury. What should you be looking for, and what should you be offering your clients when designing a luxury kitchen? Think about your pantry and your scullery, a morning kitchen or coffee station that can not only be incorporated into your kitchen, but possibly into a master bedroom or owner's retreat, bar, lounge, and mixology kitchen, an outdoor kitchen, multi-generational kitchens, that really goes back to our multi-generational suite for our boomerangs, a wine room, a cellar, or an attic, recycling, composting, touchless water refill stations, and herb walls and hydroponic gardens. Artisan crafted products, such as wide plank flooring shown here, can really enhance the look of spaces throughout a home. Wide plank floors come in a range of finishes and colors that help to make even smaller spaces appear more expansive. In concert with the maker movement, no two floors are ever the same, giving each of your spaces a signature look. Particular to wellness, wide plank floors bring home the comforts associated with how trees were felled and milled in simpler times. Here we see three beautiful pantries. The one on the left is um, a accompanied by a beautiful metal door, which adds and ties in with the architecture. The middle picture is a galley. A scullery or pantry can also host a butler's pantry. And then the one to the right shows where you can have not only farm fresh vegetables, but also canned goods that you yourself might have preserved. Morning kitchens can be as small as a refrigerator and a coffee pot, or even have a warming bin, and sometimes, depending on whether it's close to an outside deck with a sky view, you might even consider putting in a dishwasher. Bar lounge and mixology is very popular. Just carving out a small nook and cranny or an entire space 
in a secondary area can certainly add to an entertainment within the home. Steve, you know so much about outdoor kitchens. Can you share a little bit with us at this point? You are singing my song. Look at that barbecue grill and all of that wood. It's all about smoking, uh, barbecue, and good vibes. We are going outdoors these days in order to be safe, but tomorrow we'll be outdoor to expand our living spaces. The multi-generational approach is really important to think about. If you've got about 500 square feet in a home that you might have just said it's going to be unfinished space, think twice. That could be an opportunity to create an Airbnb for extra income. And as I mentioned before, it's an opportunity for family members, old and young, to return home to the nest during times of holidays, celebration, and at times when you have no other choice. Wine lofts are really becoming um, a very popular item, and I did not know much about them until my dear friend Steve decided to take, how many square feet was it? It was about a 1,000 square feet. We were on a slab, and so there was no room for a cellar. Traditionally, wine is stored underground in order to improve the uh, cold chill facilities. But there's no reason, like us, that we can't uh, modify an attic space. You've just got to pay attention to the uh, insulation in order to store and preserve your wine. So the upper left is a... A, a loft cellar and I can see there that you've got chilling drawers and chilling walls and towers uh, as well as a wine tasting area didn't look to me like you gave up anything there Steve in this wine loft um, same thing holds true in the wine cellar to the right how nice that we were able to get some natural light into that space so it's a split level as well as on the main level just having a little nook and a cranny and in this case there is no natural light it's just kind of off of the dining room, but enough of an area for a tasting space. It's also wonderful to make sure that we are really playing into the sustainable movement as it relates to recycling. But it's not just about recycling. It's also about composting. All that can be right at your fingertips near your sink. Composting can also be portable. It doesn't necessarily have to be built in. It also can be outside, close to where um, your herbs and spices are because the composting is good for growing vegetables. But herb walls don't necessarily have to be on the outside. They can also be on the inside. As we were talking about sculleries and uh, pantries areas, you could take the same amount of space and create an aquaponics or a hydroponic garden. Additionally, touch water fill resell refill stations. I just want to say, when it comes to single-use plastics, we should be all moving away from Ziploc bags and anything plastic as it relates to retaining our water throughout the day. How nice it would it be to just get up in the morning, fill up your water bottle, or even two or three for that matter, and head out. Other ways to filter water can be as simple as a in-the-refrigerator filtration system filtration system that sits on top of your counters, as well as a whole house reverse osmosis. And that gets out most contaminants, although you still need to figure out what your filters do take out of the water versus what they do leave in. Not all wa water filtration systems are good for all municipalities of water. So now we'll move into the moderate kitchen. Again, we're looking at the pantry, the wine cabinet, outdoor grilling, multi-generational kitchen, the herb wall again, recycling, composting, and water filtration. But we're not spending as much. So depending on what your client's budget is, there is something that will fit each of the budgets. Boy, that looks like a Costco closet to me. That's exactly what that is, Steve. And what a great way to save money when you have a large family or planning for large events. Being able to store all of those bulky cans and jars makes such a difference. But it wasn't finished out in an overly expensive finish. The one to the right could be just simple wood bought at Home Depot and painted. The one in the middle, a butcher block was added. And the one on the left, the designer brought the personality through baskets that were used for storage. The moderate kitchen wine cabinet, a little bit different than the loft. But it's in this case, the one on the right houses four cases of wine. The one in the middle is a refrigeration tower that's built into the kitchen that's 
a quarter space, and then the one on the left, we see a full tower, and that would store three cases of wine and champagne as well. Zoned for both white and red. Yes, it was. Oh, here we go again. Different outdoor grilling budget, but what are your thoughts on these, Steve? I love the smoker in the middle. Um, I come from the area where they're famous for the big green egg, but I love the black and chrome that goes in with the countertops and the appliance knobs. The multi-generational kitchen, as I shared prior, generally takes up um, a small amount of the 600 square feet that you would need for a one-bedroom separate residence within the home. But you don't need a full kitchen. Here we see a full kitchen to the right, but to the left we see just a galley kitchen, which hosts a microwave, small refrigerator, and a sink. However, the one on the right is a full refrigerator, and we have a dishwasher and all that you would expect in a normal kitchen. So depending on the space, your design can accommodate the needs of your homeowner. And the herb wall, you can create one of those yourself. This is the moderate herb wall. This was made out of some galvanized tubing. And in the one on the right, there was just an outlet uh, cut out of the butcher block top. And it was not only used for herbs, but also to chill wine and possibly drinks during an uh, entertaining moment. It's great to have the herbs right there at, at your touch. You can grow from seed, and as Jillian said, let's not have those plastic pots that we have to throw away. And recycling and compositing can be as simple as a little bucket that you take once a day out into the garden and help mulch up so you can replenish your, your herb garden. There are less expensive water filtrations. Often they are counter-mounted, which can cause a little bit of clutter, but if your client's on a budget, there's no reason why they, too, cannot have the best of health and wellness within your home. Now we're moving into healthy bathrooms. This is quite beautiful. Let's not forget that natural light feeds us with vitamin D, and v vitamin D has been proven to help counteract cancer cell growth. So any time you can bring natural light into a home makes a difference. Also, natural ventilation. And while people are traveling less, it's great to be able to have a spa vacation, or if, we, or if you will, called a staycation. That's demonstrated beautifully in this slide. Not only is the view part of the interior space, but there's integrated bidets, dual flush buttons, soaking tubs, and touchless faucets, which helps keep germ control down. If your client has a situation where they want to have a vacation um, share or trade, or even in a VRBO or Airbnb, think about touchless faucets. Certainly will keep the maintenance down. Speaking of surfaces, everybody is concerned and will continue to be about antimicrobial. And so there are surfaces such as porcelain, ceramic, glass, quartz, that allow for an antimicrobial surface together with touchless faucets will promote health and wellness. When selecting antimicrobial services, just be a little leery to make sure they're not made with a silver base, especially in the showers. Silver base will wear off, it'll go into our water supply, and then it can become a contaminant that can actually um, affect our health and wellness. So knowing as much as you can about antimicrobials is, a, is very important. Look at these quartz surfaces. They're continuing to grow in popularity. Better brands are more realistically replicating the look of natural stone. They're bringing a wellness connection to nature and living spaces. And their antimicrobial properties also require very minimal maintenance. And Steve, you've got quite a few clients that you work with that are doing it right. I think they're, some of them are coming out of Italy and Germany and other parts of Europe. Is that correct? That's right. Not just for the surfaces, but also for the installation and the grout products that have literally zero res associated with installation. Too many contractors take their uh, tools after they install a job and literally wash contaminants down the drain without thinking twice about it. So it's very important to think not just about the touch surface, but also the installation materials. And ventilation is key. We're seeing that more and more that we're tightening our boxes and our boxes are our envelopes. If we tighten our envelopes, but we don't have proper ventilation, 
Our houses can be sick. They can cause the tight box syndrome. So when we tighten our boxes, we really need to make sure that we put in the right ventilation. And in the case of bathrooms, that can be as simple as exhaust fans and sensing exhaust fans that sense volatile organic compounds known as VOCs. Also, smart home technology that's hooked into humostats is a great profit center and something you should think about potentially offering as an add-on to what you already do. The more you know about how your home can function in a healthy manner, the more you're creating profit opportunities for you and for the rest of your staff. And your home can respond to you instead of you learning how to respond to it. So let's think about bathrooms. What's really important in a bathroom? As Steve said, a stay vacation is everything. So a soaking room, a sauna, a steam room, heated towel racks, these are all things you'd find in a five-star hotel. Water filtration, an apothecary that hides um, uh, personal care products that you might not want to have laid out on your counter. Organizing costume jewelry, having a glamour room or magnifying mirrors, as well as outdoor showers in areas of the country that... um, are in climatic and allow for that. And refrigerator drawers can be used to make sure that your makeup doesn't melt. That's a great point, especially in hot, humid areas. Here's, a, here's three examples of soaking rooms. One that's at a window that brings in nature that has maximum privacy. The next, privacy was an issue, so the window was raised up. And lastly, architectural elements that are hidden behind um, shower hidden behind a glass wall makes for a beautiful design. Additionally, we have saunas, saunas that open up into shower areas, as well as super custom saunas that might be located on a lower level without any natural light. All of these are little nooks and crannies that can be embraced within the plan. Again, these nooks and crannies can become a profit center for you. Steam rooms often located on lower levels, but as you can see, the steam room on the right is on a higher level. How can I tell that? Because we're all the way up in the trees and we can see the branch outside of that window. Embracing the interior interior with exterior natural light can really make a difference in showing off the finishes, whether it's slabs of marble or beautiful tile work. And also learning what slabs are local can cut down on freight as it relates to getting it to the site. Many parts of the country host many different types of stone. I'd start there before I'd look to see what's overseas. Heated towel racks also make a difference. Steve, I know you represent a few folks that have um, heated towel racks. What are your thoughts on the latest and greatest? Heated towel racks continue to gain traction as homeowners look to create that spa-like staycation experience right in their own bathrooms. The fixtures aren't just stylish. They reduce the need to launder towels as often, which, of course, preserves our precious water resources. Heated towels and bathrobes also promote better sleep. In fact, a study found that taking a hot bath about 90 minutes before bed helps people fall asleep quicker. So this bathroom is hosting an apothecary. You see one built in behind the medicine mirror, and you see one to the right that's a piece of furniture. And in the case of the one in the middle, it's part of the drawers. I'd like you to think about RXs. One of the biggest problems we have in the United States is transition drugs from oxycodone that unfortunately take us down a road that could lead to heroin abuse. If unfortunately you have had an operation that is required that you take an oxycodone, Make sure that that's locked up. How should you lock it up? You just take those RXs and either put them away with a key lock or with an automatic lock that you can set on a combination. But these are things you can be offering. This is a profit center, making sure RX is out of the sight and view of um, mainly middle schoolers is my biggest concern, but also high schoolers as well. A moment ago I mentioned custom jewelry and organization all tends to end up in baskets or bags and bundled up and never worn because you don't know what you're getting to. So part of your service could be hiring an organizer to go into the home and help your clients separate their clothes, their purses, their shoes, give a good bag to Goodwill, and organize really all that they only need rather than just 
an overabundance that they don't that they don't use. Organization is everything. A place for everything and everything in its place. So here we are with the glam room that was mentioned by Steve. Some folks really invest a lot in their personal care, and this is important to them. Again, it's a profit center. I really do like the one in the middle. Don't you, Steve, that has that natural light window, the skylight above? The combination of the two? Looks like an in-house spa. It sure does, and we need much more of that at home. We've learned that coming out of the pandemic. We've not been able to get out as much, so why not create that in your own home? Magnifying mirrors especially like the one in the middle. There are mirrors now also that you can take yoga lessons to. Outdoor living, as we talked about before in cooking, also transpires into the bathroom. There's no reason that a bathroom must have four walls. In fact, it could be surrounded by Mother Nature. Outdoor showers, outdoor soaking tubs are now the most important thing for an outdoor bathroom. So let's go to the laundry room, a healthy laundry room. What's, what does that mean to have a healthy laundry room? I'd like to start with the four walls. When you are specifying your paint finishes, it does not do any good at all if you put up a paint primer that has VOCs in it and then you put on a no VOC paint on top. The first uh, layer, the no VOC, uh, the VOC primer will undo the work of the non-VOC final surface color. So make sure your primer is no VOC and your paint is either no VOC or low VOC to cut the fumes in your house. You really don't want your house to smell new, just as you don't want your car to smell new. We all think that new car smell is a good thing, but new car smell is actually um, flame retardants that has been sprayed on your surfaces. And speaking of a laundry room, if you are going to use dry cleaning, make sure that you take them out of the bags before you bring them into the home. Absolutely. So stacked appliances versus side-by-side -side appliances. And think about how your doors open, especially on your washers and dryers when you're in tight spaces. There are not many appliances out there that open with the hinge on the right for washing machines. But think about that when you're talking to your clients, especially in tight spaces. Garage laundries, they do not have to look like a garage mahal. You can finish a garage out to be warm and inviting. We've learned through the pandemic that our garages have turned into home studios for the neighborhood to come on a Friday night and watch movies on the, on the garage door. Or it can be an overflow place for ping pong and uh, pool tables. So just keep in mind, if you do put your laundry room outside, it doesn't have to necessarily be... Um, tied in with cars and mechanics. It can be tied in with more of a luxurious space. Pet washing stations also. Think about how those could be an add-on in your laundry room as well as, as I said, in the garage. Garment steam cabinets. As Steve said, there's a lot of VOCs and chemicals attached to dry cleaning. So an, another way to solve that is to get a garment steaming cabinet. Some of them are known as personal steam valets. Multiple laundry rooms is also something to think about, as well as ionic laundry purifiers to help keep detergents down. Here we see examples of stacked appliances in tight spaces. Again, remember that door swing, especially on the washing machine. And here we see them side by side. When you have this kind of room, you really don't have to worry about the door swing. And the combination of a garage not necessarily looking like a garage room, but more like a laundry room. I especially like the one in the middle. You would not know that was a garage unless you looked up at the top to see the garage door that's retractable. And notice the natural light that's getting into the kitchen, excuse me, the laundry in the middle and the laundry on the right. Pet washing stations. That's a family member too. Let's make sure we make sure we have spaces for our doggies, whether it's from a washing standpoint, or where they are sleeping within the home. And here is our garment and steam cabinet. The one in the middle is quite economical. It steams a single piece, versus the one on the left and the one on the right. They steam multiple pieces. They can be built into a laundry room, but you can also run a water line to your, ma your master closet or owner's closet to uh, facilitate. 
When thinking about locating more than one laundry room, think about who in the home will be using it. And is it something that you need to use all the time, or is it part of your zoning? Remember, it goes back to right-sizing and figuring out exactly the space you need and when you need it. So zone your home, and you, you can also do the same with your laundry rooms. They might get a lot of use when the house is on its ex, in its expansion mode. Laundry detergent replacement it can be quite expensive, but if you're using an ionizing system, that's pretty much filtration, and it reduces the need for laundry detergent. I guess flex space isn't limited just to wine lofts. There's also room for exercise, whether it be the mirror on the wall or the Peloton bike on the floor. Healthy living, flex space, interactive fitness mirrors, these are all easy fixes in order to remodel your house and take a space that used to be uh, just extra and then turned into one that is, turns into a lifestyle room. Branding to showcase your wellness focus. It's important to demonstrate your wellness focus by leveraging product knowledge. After all, people are attracted to people with information. So make sure that you leverage the principles of wellness design. It's 2021 and it's time to give your building product brand a fresh start. It's important to use digital media that is, e-blasts and e-newsletters in order to distribute content. Wellness Within Your Walls is a uh, brand that can be used to help influence education and also certain colors that are able to stimulate wellness. Invest in high quality photography and video. While we talked about Google being important to be able to categorize keywords and content, we live in a society that is attracted to visual elements. It's important to use video and excellent photography in order to stimulate the senses. Consider starting a blog or submit guest posts on other people's blogs, co-branding wellness with other brands that are already talking about subjects such as biophilic design. It's important to be active on social media. After all, that's where people are getting their news now. Use your photography and video and partner with influencers, if you will. Influencing the influencers is a way to demonstrate your wellness. Expanding your client base. That's really what we're talking about today, isn't it? And you've learned a lot about how you go about that with aligning with other brands and good design. Opportunity waits. Most people will hire an allied professional rather than undertake renovations themselves. It's, DIY is great, but it's not easy to do. Soon people will be more comfortable with contractors and designers in their home as we move away from the pandemic. Product integration is a way of having your brand within branded content, such as the uh, radio shows that happen on the weekend for the Weekend Warriors or the television syndications. These programs are looking for sponsors and products to integrate into their content. And there's no reason that you can't integrate your product also into design centers and model homes. Model homes and demonstration homes are going to become even more popular, especially since we figured out how to do virtual tours, which is less of an expense as it relates to builders when they're trying to showcase what their uh, new product lines are. Also keep in mind that magazines throughout the United States are putting on demonstration homes, some of which are speaking directly to health and wellness. And they're looking for designers to do a room within the home, and then the participation uh, reveals an opportunity to be published within digital platforms as well as um, print media. So figure out which magazines you like to read, which ones you want to align with. Look up who your favorite editorials are written by and reach out. Let them know who you are. Show them what you're up to and possibly participate in one of their up-and-coming demonstration homes. Show homes are not just considered to be model homes. Show homes 
Some model homes stay open for a short period of time and don't have a long lifespan, whereas others can stay open up to 24 months or, or longer. So think about how you can align with a builder to showcase your design work. And when it comes to the profit center of model homes, you might do that as an industry, which is wonderful. Or you may make the decision to do one and cut the builder a price that is good for you and good for him, and he's going to actually be the one to promote your work by anyone that walks through it. There's lots of ways to market your design, and demonstration and show homes is a wonderful way, whether it's virtual or in person. Product opportunities to grow your profit margin. Aligning with many companies and learning more about what their offering is, there may be an incentive for you if you're going to go ahead and potentially show off a new convection or induction or the sous vide, which I mentioned earlier, or even the vacuum seal preserving. I think that's extremely important to know the new product lines and assist with sales and marketing folks as the designer in getting it into the marketplace. Create a relationship with your manufacturers and with your distribution centers. Same holds true with water. Those touch lip faucets, water filtration, water bottle fillers. I know you think you went to school for interior design and for interior architecture and for specification. Never did you think that you would be required to think about water filtration or air filtration. But it's important that you understand the mechanics of a home and you're able to ask the right questions to your new clients. Do a methodology. Really understand where they're coming from and what their needs are. If they have family members that have asthma, that's extremely important as it relates to having a dialogue with them. Maybe even need to think about not just the water filtration, but also adding an air purifier. Again, back to the countertops and antimicrobial surfaces. Quartz are having new uh, designs that are every bit as attractive as Mother Nature. Uh, stainless steel was born in the commercial kitchen for a reason. It wasn't just for its aesthetics. Moreover, it was because chefs understood that they could clean the surfaces to take care of foodborne illness. Plumbing is important, as Jillian talked about, uh, point-of-use water. We also have to remove that water, so it's important that we take care of Earth's resources, uh, making sure that uh, there is potential for dual flush in case you have liquid waste versus solid waste. So being able to have an invigorating spa experience is just as important as being able to eliminate waste from a home. Ceramic, glass, natural stone, and marble quartz, porcelain. They come in different sizes and thicknesses, all suited for various applications, both in the kitchen, bath, and other rooms. Wonderful as it relates to keeping maintenance down. Um, when you put a hard surface like this, it's mu so much more durable, especially if you're in humid climates. And flooring. Let's think about all the different floorings that are available to us. I remember when I started my career about 40 years ago, it was pretty much wood or tile, but now we've got bamboo, and our ceramics are more than just um, limestone and terracotta. Concrete has always been a really nice way to get a, a modern industrial feel, but they're now scoring it in different ways and coloring it in different ways. Depending on what your floor plan's about and your building structure, concrete can actually be a good solution, and it can save money because it can be your subfloor and it can be your floor. Cork is wonderful as it relates to sustainability, and it certainly keeps the noise down, especially living in a multifamily dwelling. And engineered wood has come a long way. I'm a big fan of engineered wood, especially if there are any VOCs used in the finishing process, because these woods are gassing off in your distributor's manufacturing um, facilities or the warehouses that they're being dispersed to. That way you're not bringing the VOCs into your home. Hardwoods are always a big plus, but I'm all for the hardwoods in your local area. Try not to ship too far, especially from overseas if it's not necessary. Look at what's in the U.S. first. And then, of course, if your needs are not met, going outside of the U.S., we are a global industry. Why not? But see what's around first. Laminates, 
I'd be cautious with laminates as it relates to really understanding what your adhesives are all about. I think the application of laminates to look like marble and stone is wonderful, especially if you don't have the budget for the real McCoy. And luxury vinyl tile, again, pay attention to the VOCs that are in the manufacturing process or the off-gassing that might take place when you install them into their home. But all of these can be a great profit center for you, the designer, and determine what your showroom is going to look like, what you might have the most success with, and whether you're really going to make a commitment to health, wellness, and sustainability as you make these selections. Also keep in mind that um, an air purifier, whether it's exhaust fans or humistats or whole house humidification or just portable humidification, these can be an add-on. You can carry some of these smaller products within your studios um, and design centers or just know that that can be something you can specify and put into your specifications that will be handed over to the builder. Show your client that you understand ventilation and airflow. It's important to them. Other design opportunities on our recap was the pantry and the scullery, the morning kitchen, coffee station, bar lounge, outdoor kitchens. I loved what Steve added as it related to whether it's a full-blown built-in outdoor barbecue or something that's standing in place that's movable. Multi-generational kitchens for those boomerang kids and retiring boomers, wine rooms, cellar and attic, recycling, composting, touchless water refill station, herb wall, hyperponic gardens. All of these are profit centers. All of these can produce a greater profit margin. Soaking tubs, saunas, steam rooms, heated towel racks, water filtration, apothecary. Remember about organizing your client? Don't forget to bring in someone that does that for an industry. Expand your profit center by making sure you're aligned with other folks that understand how it can make it easy for your occupant moving into a new home. Glamour rooms, and don't forget what Steve added, possibly a refrigerator, especially in humid climates, to put to store makeup and magnifying mirrors and interactive fitness mirrors, especially in tight spaces, as Steve mentioned, that was flex spaces that can make a big difference. Small space, but a mirror that has all of what you need as it relates to your workout programs. Garage laundry rooms for um, for expansion beyond the house. Multiple laundry rooms within the house. Stacked appliances. Remember what I said by stacked appliances and really understanding that door swing. Side-by-side -side appliances, garments, steam cabinets, ionic laundry purifiers helps keep the cost down as it relates to detergents. Show your clients that you really understand the environment. And remember what I said about EWG? That was a big takeaway. Check out their water campaign page. And remember, we're connected now to a bigger space than just our neighborhood. We're connected to the world. Many of these innovations in terms of wellness have come from overseas, and we're just a touch away. The Internet provides the connection to other countries and other languages. So live locally, but express yourself globally. Think global and multicultural. British bathrooms are where some of the designs are coming from. And the German uh, community has been known for plumbing designs for years. Italy for antimicrobial zero res VOC grout. Well, if you have any questions, do feel free to send an email to either Jillian Pritchard Cook. And my email address is Jillian at Wellness Within Your Walls, that's plural, dot com. And for keeping your brand well, sk at com. With special thanks today to Design Galleria for much of the portfolio and House Beautiful Magazine. Amba Heated Towel Racks. April Air. Carlisle Wide Plank Floors. Lytical Italy and Vidara Quartz Surfaces. To learn more about designing for wellness and healthy living system, visit www.wellnesswithinyourwalls.com And to build wellness for your brand through sales and marketing alignment, visit cleburneassociates.com We thank you very much.